lot of support along the, uh, along the balcony here for Michael Gunning. Very popular figure. Oh my gosh, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've really loved vlogging for you guys over this past few months. I really have. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you for all your lovely messages and comments. Honestly, they mean the world to me. So thank you. I was really hoping I was going to be able to vlog from the British Olympic trials, which happened two weeks ago now in the London Aquatic Centre. But unfortunately, due to the guidelines changing and the COVID safety, I wasn't able to swim because they renamed the competition the British Selection Trials. So no international swimmers were allowed to go. I know that they only accepted, I think, 25 entries per event as well. So a lot of British swimmers missed out too. So I feel your pain. It's very, very gutting. I've been to the past 12 British Championships, so I was gutted not to go. But I think for me, that just means I've got to find another meet to qualify for Olympics. I've got to go to a FINA approved meet and set the times. Last year, I set all my, my FINA times, my Olympic qualifying standard. But now I've got to find another meet to go to, which I'm trying not to stress about. I'm trying to keep cool and keep keep confident, keep the faith. But it's very tough when lots of different meets are getting cancelled. Obviously, there's not really many competitions here in the UK. So I'm going to keep my look out and hopefully I'll be able to get to another competition very soon. Now, for most of the pandemic, I did pretty much just go into autopilot, doing the hard work, just getting all the hard sessions done. And I did attend the British Invitational meet. And two days before the meet, I went home back to my home pool and the pool was long course for the first time this year. So I'm going to take you back to that moment. I've got loads of different questions that you sent in on my Instagram, so I can't wait to go through them and answer some of them. But take a look back at my first long course session two days before my competition. Oh my gosh, guys, I have just arrived at the pool and look what I've just arrived to. <laughs> it's long course, my very first long course session this year. question I have here is how have you kept the motivation going swimming by yourself? Well let me tell you it has been very tough, it really has. Anyone that knows me knows how much I love being around my teammates, having fun, having a laugh and obviously I've been forced to swim by myself so there's been some really dark days, there really has. I've really really struggled at some points especially during some of the key sessions because when you've got no one there next to you forcing you to go faster and I haven't had a coach either so it's been it's been doubly hard um, but I think at the back of my head it's Olympic year obviously the Olympic Games is this summer and I would love to qualify I'd love to go so I think that's just been my motivation really and yeah I'd love to be there putting on my Jamaica kit again doing my country proud. Okay, so the next question, do you prefer long course or short course? Now, my question to you, is that in training or is that in racing? Um, because they're both very different things. But my answer to both of them is long course. I would choose long course over anything else. Um, I'm not a massive fan of short course. I don't really like the underwater and the turns, even though I'm quite good at them. Um, I just prefer getting into a rhythm, staying relaxed, especially on fly. Um, so my answer is definitely long course. So this leads me on to my next question. How was your first session back long course? Now, it was quite tough. It did feel really, really long, but I think I was so happy that I could get in before I raced into a long course pool. It was only one session, um, but still, I think it really matters. And 
I got in, I spoke to my coach, I rang my coach and said, the pool's long course, can I change my session? I didn't want to just swim up and down, I wanted to do something really valuable while it was long course. So I actually done a race pace session and I'd done quite well. I, I'm glad that I'd done it. I was going 28s on the board and um, yeah, I was really, really happy with just doing my first session long course. What is your diet like and meal preps? Now, I know exactly who sent this in. I know he's an athlete living in the USA in a completely different sport. But I think swimming is so different. A normal average week for me, I'm normally covering about 65,000 metres to 70,000 metres. So it's a lot of metres. So I do have a lot of carbs. But I think the key is balance. I do have a very balanced diet. I eat lots of different fruits and veg, getting in the vitamins. I have a lot of lean protein. But I do treat myself now and again as well. I do like a coffee cake. So I do think it's all about balance. And my best friend is vegetarian as well. So he obviously doesn't eat meat. So the amount of vegetables and good nutrition that I'm actually getting in my body is probably down to him. But it's it's amazing because no week is the same. No meals are the same. We always switch it up. And um, but yeah, please don't get me wrong. I do love a coffee cake, but I think it's all about balance. What was you most nervous about racing for the first time in so long? I think that's what it was because I hadn't raced in so long. I had no idea what to expect. You know, it had been 16 months before I raced. So I was just looking forward to getting in and doing my races, but also so scared because I hate the unknown. I was walking into the complete unknown. I didn't know how the meet would be, obviously, with all the different restrictions and rules. We got sent a massive pack beforehand about what we could do, what we couldn't do. We even had marshals looking out for us as we was walking from the hotel to the pool. Bear in mind, it was only a three minute walk, but there was people outside the Tesco Express making sure that no one went into the shops because obviously we were in our bubbles. Um, so I think I was just so nervous about what to expect because, yeah, I really didn't know. How different was racing in a pandemic? Oh, that's a good one. I think it's difficult because swimming is an individual sport. Obviously, we have a block, we have a lane, and when you go to compete, you are by yourself. But I think it also showed to us that swimming isn't an individual sport as well. We really rely on our friends and our teammates. You know, when we weren't swimming and when we weren't at the pool, we were having to isolate in the hotel on our own. We wasn't allowed to hug each other. We wasn't allowed to be in groups and... You know, it really did make a difference. I'm a massive overthinker and all I ever do is think about racing and what am I going to do. So to suddenly be on your own and to be totally isolated, you do overthink even more. Um, I do love chatting in the swim down pool and catching up with people, especially with people. It's been so long since we've seen everyone. So I think that was the craziest thing. Wearing masks all the time. You know, I think we've all been kind of used to wearing masks, but not in a swimming pool. I think we took it off just before we came out out of the cool room. And, you know, I really struggled to breathe. I do have asthma as well, but I really found it quite hard to breathe. Now we've got one more race to come. And it should be a belter as well. Two hundred flight for the men. This was a really close race this morning. Let's see what the boys have got for us this evening. There was no spectators at the meet too, which obviously, you know, is totally understandable. But I think I really underestimate the effect and the, the support that the crowd give you. It really is great. And kind of having no crowd, having no one really shout for you and you know, just kind of your teammates. It was very, very strange. I think it just takes a bit of time to get used to. Any advice to swimmers still not able to get in the water? That is really tough and I really feel your pain. But I think just try and take one day at a time. Try not to worry. Don't look too far ahead. Land work while you're on land. I think, you know, swimming is great, but there's so many more things that we can do on land with our core stability, with our strengthening, with our shoulder exercises, because, you know, swimming is just a part of competing. You know, there's so many more aspects of flexibility and stretching. So try and make the most of the time you have now on land. Really focus every night on flexibility or doing core work and pools will be reopening soon. I know that here in England, they finally opened to everyone, which is great. So I get my teammates back, but hopefully all around the world and in Wales, people will start to 
go back to normal and go back to their pool. So please stay motivated. Please stay positive. We will all be out of this soon. Just stay strong. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you took a few things away from that video, whether it was the Q&A or just my first long course meet. Let me know what you'd like to see, because obviously I'm doing this for you guys, hopefully to inspire you, to give you a bit of an insight into things that you don't know about me. And hopefully I will see you soon. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, all of those stuff on YouTube, because I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm not answering that one. No. Honestly, this question comes up all the time. Are you single? Yes, I'm single. Please don't rub it in my face. <laughs> have you still been swimming in lockdown? Guys, have you not watched my YouTube videos yet? Yes, I have been swimming solo. So please check out the video. It was on my YouTube. <laughs> Do your research. <laughs>